Okay, we are at 11 o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Wanted to thank everybody for joining us this, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, depending on where you're located. Uh, thanks for taking the time to join us today. You're here for the Improving Education While Optimizing Infrastructure and Cost webinar. Um, on this webinar, we're going to be talking to a, a panel to address some of the, the common challenges that we're seeing in schools today, dealing with you know, how to improve the learning experience while at the same time you know, maximizing the existing infrastructure and, and making sure that we're doing this within, uh, within the you know, reasonable cost. Uh, I'm Rob Henshaw. I'm the CMO here at Cameo. For those of you who are not familiar with Cameo yet, uh, we're a virtual application delivery platform that enables you to deliver any Windows app to any device uh, from the browser. So it just makes it very easy for you to provide your students and faculty and staff uh, with access to any Windows uh, application that you've invested in from whatever device they have in front of you. Uh, we're lucky to be joined today by our friends and partners from uh, Google for Education, who we integrate closely with. And we're also joined by a very special guest from Homer Central School District, who will be sharing his experiences and his challenges and how, he's over to, how he was able to overcome those challenges. So with that, let me introduce today's panelists. Uh, we are joined by Chris Lobodian, who is the Network Administrator at Homer Central School District. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Thanks. Uh, we're also joined by Ruby Chang, who is the, a Program Manager with Google for Education. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. Thanks for joining us, Ruby. Uh, we're also going to be joined by uh, Kyle Azua, also a program manager at Google for Education. He is wrapping up a presentation at a conference right now, and he's going to be joining us momentarily, so he'll be uh, on the line in, the, in a moment here. And then we're also joined by Jordan Pusey, who's the head of education sales here at Cameo. Hi, glad to be here today. Thanks, Jordan. Excellent. So a couple of uh, housekeeping items before we dive into uh, the, the panel conversation. Uh, first of all, everybody right now is, uh, uh, all the attendees are uh, muted, but if you have any questions throughout the conversation, please submit those in the, the chat or the questions um, uh, panel on your GoToWebinar tool. Uh, throughout the, the conversation, we'll be taking a look at those questions. We'll address as many of those as possible during the Q&A session at the end. Uh, if we don't get to all the questions, then what we typically do is we will take any unanswered questions and we'll write a blog post about those um, on blog.cameo.com. So afterwards, if we don't get to your question during the Q&A se section, we're sorry about that. And we will cover that in a blog post and make sure that we answer your questions there. Um, this panel is uh, being recorded. So afterwards, if you, if you have to jump off or if you would like to share this with uh, some colleagues afterwards, you will be getting within about a day or so uh, an email with uh, a link to the recording. So you'll all be able to, to access that again if you'd like. And then um, in terms of the, the format and what we'll be talking about today, uh, so we are our, our goal here is to have this be a, an interactive conversation, uh, a panel conversation. We are not going to be uh, boring you to death with PowerPoint slides. We are going to, as much as possible, just keep this interactive and and also give Chris uh, from Homer a chance to share his environment and show you guys firsthand what it looks like, how easy it is to use um, both the, the Cameo and, and Google for Education uh, joint solution. So we're going to try to keep that, uh, keep the, the slides to a minimum and just keep this conversational. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and dive in and get started. Uh, what we'd like to do is, you know, overall kind of take a look at these, these three core issues that we see schools and school districts dealing with today. And uh, what we'd like to do is just pass the, the, the ball over to Chris and chat, you know, Chris, what are you, what were you seeing when you, when you started looking at uh, solutions like, like Cameo and Google for Education, what were the, the kind of core issues you were dealing with? And if you could give us an overview of how that looked and, and the challenges that you were facing and what you needed to solve for. Yeah, sure. Um, so just to kind of give you a brief uh, little overview of, of kind of uh, our environment. So, you know, we have roughly 2000 students um, probably 500 instructional and non-instructional staff. Um, and we really had just transitioned to a one-to-one -one, uh, Chromebook uh, environment. Um, so we started to notice that, you know, we still had all these, these labs that were out, out uh, in the district, um, but yet we still, we, we had every child on a device, right? So every kid has a device, we still have all these computer labs, and we really wanted to try and figure out, um, you know, what was, what was the purpose of these labs? Were they still, 
um, serving a real need, or was that one-to-one -one program really um, was it was it filling the, the gap that that we needed to fill? So after doing a little investigation, we we really noticed that you know by and large most most of those labs were being used by by Chrome, which you know hooray Chromebook. Um, but you know there were still some Windows apps that were really hard for folks to get away from a lot of the Office applications and, and other teaching applications. Um, so we really just tried to figure out what was going to be the best best avenue to go down and 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 not maintain different labs uh, in the district. Um, so that's when we tried to, to to really go down this avenue of, uh, of of some sort of an application that could be used um, on a Chromebook. Um, we, we looked at a couple other different ways of doing it. We looked at uh, different um, other companies out there that do it that you can do internally um, and potentially host it. And, um, you know, Cameo really just kind of fit the bill for kind of what we were looking to do and also to, to kind of customize to, to the district. That's great. That's great. Now, you know, overall, you know, in terms of, um, yeah, being able. Can you talk a little bit more about kind of the the ex, you know the experience you were looking to drive? Obviously, you had the one to one. You you know every student had a device. Um, but you know in in terms of being able to make it you know really dead simple to to get people um, you know to to be able to use their applications from any device. Can you talk a little bit more about that that experience part of it? Yeah, absolutely. So we didn't want this to be the way things used to be, right? So the way it used to be would be I'm a teacher. I have to schedule a lab. And hope that I can get that time frame and and then get in there. And we yeah. didn't want it to be um, a complicated thing or a kludgy thing or special, real special training or anything like that. We really wanted a solution that was a very simple web browser based um, program. And not only that, had a lot of um, integrations and hooks hooks into Google. So you know that was really the driving force was something that was integrated into what we were already using. Um, and something that would um, that would be very simple, not much training. Um, it would be literally as as simple as as opening a, a web application. That's great. That's great. So you know, let's go one by one, kind of through these these core challenges that you're facing, uh, and, and dig in a little bit deeper in, ter in ter terms of how you address those challenges. So when when it comes to optimizing infrastructure, um, you know, tell us a little bit more about you know how that what, what challenges you were facing, how this helped, you know, what results you've been able to see thus far. And then uh, I know that you wanted to, to show your environment. So just let me know when you're you're ready for that and I'll go ahead and pass the screen to you. Sure. So, you know, as far as, far as an infrastructure uh, standpoint, you know, we have the actual PCs themselves. So we have to maintain that. We have to maintain all of the infrastructure that supports all of those um, PCs. So whether it be Active Directory, whether it be the servers um, that provide other functions that, it, on your network, um, the storage of those of those uh, servers, um, all sorts of uh, licensing and all that other stuff, uh, on top of the fact that, that those PCs were were now starting to you know fall out of favor in terms of, of their their life cycle and needing to be replaced. So purchasing, um, and then we were also trying to balance a, a virtual desktop environment um, that we we had kind of in house that again was starting to age. We had to look at licensing, we had to look at upgrading and maintaining. So there was a lot of different things um, that we were, were looking to, to try to optimize and, 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 and kind of get rid of what was now only the 20% the of our entire uh, fleet out in the world. So 80% of our fleet now is, is a Chromebook um, and only 20% is, is, is still that Windows desktop or laptop. So it really made sense to, to try to to really optimize things that really favored the Chromebook. Excellent, that's great. Would you like me to go ahead and uh, give you the screen so you can show everybody what this looks like? Yeah, absolutely. There you go. All right, Rob, can you see my screen? We can, yes. All right, perfect. So, um, you know, it was really just as simple as, hey, how do I get an app from uh, a web that, that we use to a web page and then a Chromebook can launch? So from our uh, customizable um, application portal that we have through Cameo, it's literally as simple as, as playing, quote unquote, playing or running an application in the browser and immediately 
I get access to that to that uh, that application. So it is that simple. It is that easy. Um, and it literally took me uh, one day to fully just get it up and testing uh, within my own environment. Wow, that's incredible. So you you did this all yourself in one day. I did it all myself in one day. Um, you know, there was some things that uh, I needed some some tweaking, and, and the the guys at Kamea were were more than happy to uh, to lend a hand and spend some time. But honestly, I wanted to get my hands dirty and do it myself. And I gotta say, it was probably one of the the easier projects I've done when it came to, to implementing some sort of a virtual application. That's phenomenal. Excellent. Uh, great. Well, so let, let me quickly switch back over to uh, to Ruby. So Ruby, um, you know, how does this you know how how do the challenges that that Chris is dealing with? Um, do you see you know how, tell us a little bit more about what you guys are seeing in, in Google for Education and and are these typical challenges? Is this you know, are you seeing this every day? Yeah, thanks for the invitation to join everyone here today. You know it's it's incredible because when we think about the work that our team has done, Google for Education has brought ninety million students and educators online on G Suite for Education. Um, last week at that we announced that there are forty million students and educators on Chromebooks. Um, and when we think about how the technology that really kind of powers all of that, um, there are a few other services that come to mind within Google's portfolio, like Search and G Suite and Forms and Chrome. And what really blew me away about uh, Chris's example here is that it takes such little time to get a project like this started that fits and integrates so well within the infrastructure that you have. And it's all built on um, Cameo's platform, which is on Google's infrastructure. And that powers all of that. So all of the, the things that really bring this to life, like the underlying servers, networking infrastructure, all of that is taken care of. Um, and the big takeaway for me is that it made it so simple for schools to just get started like this instead of having to think about a traditional VDI architecture and setup where you'd have to purchase a server and shipping and receiving the box, setting it up. This really does help streamline a lot of that process and keep infrastructure super simple for schools um, and to be able to kind of connect into everything that you know and love. Um, Chris, I'm excited to hear a little bit more um, during our hour together here about how um, saving and printing and all of that kind of just integrates so well for students and keeps things simple in a way that's easy for them to use. Um, but also, you, there's a lot going on in the back end that you're not seeing, like full stack security, the, the lightning fast networking. Um, and this is a huge time time difference that you're saving um, by being able to manage this and operating with limited resources. So um, we are really excited on the Google for Education side to partner with folks like Kameo to of deliver full click to deploy solutions like this, um, really in a matter of, of minutes instead of days and weeks. That's excellent. And Jordan, you know, I know that you talk to you know all of our education customers on a daily basis. Um, you know, what do you you know is this a common theme you're seeing? Is is this something that we're we're dealing with everywhere? Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that. Um, as I work with more and more education customers, uh, we start to see some 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 big trends. Uh, the first trend is is that uh, they tend to do a cloud first uh, approach uh, to the way that they solve problems, which is fantastic. And quite honestly, it beats a lot of businesses when we talk about things like digital transformation and so forth. And they've done a great job of adopting some of these technologies like Google G Suite uh, and and GCP and so forth. Uh, but inevitably, they run into um, maybe a problem or two where uh, they need to still support some of those Windows applications that are on site uh, for the educational purposes of the students, uh, maybe a vocational class or a STEM class or you know something like that. And, and so we see a lot of people that are, um, you know, they'd love to adopt the web first technologies, but they, but they don't know how. And so they tend to go back to what they know which is, okay, we can set up a PC lab. Uh, and so uh, Cameo has done a really good job of saying, okay, what we can do with this is we can still support those Windows applications, uh, but we're doing it from a web browser. So now you can support it to the device that the student has in hand, which is really critical and making it, um, making it easier to uh, support uh, infrastructure and optimize your infrastructure because you're able to offload all, all of that to the cloud all of a sudden. Um, the other thing is, is that you don't have additional hardware and software. Um, you know, you have, you've got just the, the infrastructure that you have um, that's in the cloud already. Uh, and so one of the things, uh, 
Chris, and maybe you can talk a little bit about this as well, is um, one of the things when I first met you, you said, uh, hey, we're looking at a couple of different solutions, and one of them was a VDI solution. Um, and you went through and you started building out this VDI solution on site. And you said that this this took you an afternoon, which I think is fantastic. Uh, but the VDI solution, if I remember right, you had like three months slated uh, to be able to build that out. And, and as you were building it out, um, it seemed like the, the cost was skyrocketing, that you were actually 3x uh, PC in a lab and so forth. And so, um, you know, good for you for getting on with, uh, with Cameo and understanding uh, how much easier that is to be able to implement those, those last mile applications, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, that it, it quickly became a, an interesting project uh, to, to start and, and really quickly uh, it wound up being expensive and um, time consuming and um, it just it just wasn't fitting this the simplicity. Um, you know, I certainly don't mind something being complicated for me in the IT standpoint, um, but I definitely don't want it to be complicated whatsoever for our end users. I want it to be simple and I want it to work. So, um, yeah, that's why Camille really became the, the, the perfect fit for that. That's excellent. Great. Well, Taking a look, you know, moving on to kind of the next core challenge that that you know everyone's facing these days is how do you do all of this while also reducing cost? So, you know, let's let's switch up the order a little bit here. You know, Kyle, I know that uh, Kyle, you're you're able to join us now. Thank you so much for for joining after your presentation. I appreciate that. Um, can you talk a little bit more about kind of how Google for Education partners with and works with with schools and school districts to to help them tackle these challenges while reducing cost? Yeah, definitely. Right. Just quick mic check. You can hear me okay, right? Absolutely, yep. Okay, awesome. Well, hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, so with School for Education, we, we have a lot of ways of helping schools to reduce their overall costs. I think most notably, uh, G Suite and Chrome have really enabled schools to kind of stretch their budget as much as possible while still being able to meet the individual needs of students, most importantly. Um, we also love working with partners like Kamea, who are also able to help us with this goal and helping K-12 institutions kind of take their dollars, stretch it as much as possible with the biggest impact they can uh, with, the, with their students. Um, especially for some schools that, you know, can't necessarily afford to buy an entire computer lab for some single serve pieces of software like Photoshop or Excel. And when they're still looking to enable the students to learn wherever they're at, right? Even if there was a budget to replace that entire computer lab and set it up, I think you really need to look at the impact on the students, and this solution really helps the students to learn whether they're at the library, in the classroom, at home, on the bus, and that was what was most exciting about this for me. Um, and one last point, too, when, when you think about a typical K-12 environment, uh, it's really great that uh, Cameo really helps to create this flexibility of having like a web-first and cloud-first environment. So you can really turn on an entire classroom in one click, even if you're at a different campus. Um, so, so just to reiterate, we think that Cameo's goals are really aligned to ours, and we're really excited to partner with them in this area and see that impact it can really have on the students. Um, and, and Chris, I know that uh, you were kind of in charge of setting this up, but how many people did you have to kind of wrangle together to kind of help you kick this project up? Uh, just uh, really myself and one other person to, to really kind of to vet it a little bit. And then um, I think we had our first uh, pilot uh, classroom probably the week after. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, that's. I feel like that's so so common too. I feel like number one thing I get a lot of head shakes in the rooms when I'm ever, whenever I'm presenting is as soon as you start talking about how tight staff is and how hard it is to kind of take a new technology and learn it, everybody can feel that pain. So that's that's another reason we thought this was so impressive that Chris just you by yourself be able to set the whole thing up without issues. That's great. And Jordan, uh, you know, any other color you can add here in terms of, you know, especially with our partnership with with Google, how we how we've been able to work together and and help make sure we we're we're not only you know giving students that the experience that they need, but doing this in a way that is is cost effective for schools. Yeah, I like the fact that um, you know we we talk about the the device in hand. Um, a lot of times, uh, schools they want to go after this problem with additional hardware. Um, so you know how do we how do we support those last mile uh, you know Windows applications? Well, let's go get a lab and we'll go put that together. Well, it really becomes problematic in the fact that now you're taking up um, not only hardware but there's software involved uh, in all the antivirus and support software. 
Um, I think Chris mentioned the back end as well. Uh, so, you know, now, now you have to set up an Active Directory server, you got to set up, you know, storage, um, you know, some of those, you know, appliances and so forth for storage become very expensive very quickly. Um, and then there's just the cost of maintaining and managing uh, those PCs, uh, along with the facility costs, you know, how much does it cost for you to host a lab uh, and have a classroom, you know, wouldn't it be great if you could just simply um, host those applications that are needed for the courseware in the classroom that the, the students are uh, are in with the device that they have in hand. Um, and so, you know, again, working with Homer, um, you know, that was one of the things that they were like, it doesn't make sense in our heads to have a one-to-one -one initiative when they've already got a device in their hand uh, to have to double or triple the costs uh, to support these PC labs. And so that's one advantage that you have with Cameo um, on the Google Cloud Platform is just to be able to uh, host those applications in the cloud uh, do it, um, you know, in a, in a very cost-effective manner, uh, and then being able to eliminate some of those double costs uh, around, you know, PC labs and the support, all the support and the back end that it takes to put all of those together. That's excellent. And Chris, uh, you know, is there anything you can share with us in terms of, you know, your, your actual results, what you've seen thus far, and, and how you've been able to reduce costs? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we were we were at a, a, a junction, I think we could easily say, when we were uh, kind of figuring out what would be the, mo the most sense. Would it be to buy a whole nother set of labs or to look at an alternative? Um, and when we're easily talking, you know, a decent computer, let's say $800, you need 30 of them per lab. We're talking 24K a lab very quickly. Um, so when we could simply, for maybe, you know, a fraction of that, implement Cameo, and, and now we're talking, you know, 24K times however many labs in the district, that's a huge savings on our end. So that that right there, the the, the actual buying the hardware is is a, is a probably the, the the most important piece that was that was for us. Um, some of the ancillary parts were also, you know, licensing. So now I don't have to worry about um, my Windows licensing and all of the other stuff again that goes into supporting those labs um, and and worrying about having to have that all lined up. Um, and then I think the thing that's really not quantifiable in terms of dollars and cents, but it is time, right? I mean, how much does it cost us to to pay someone to set those machines up and unbox them and get them going um, and and then to maintain them when there's an issue? So again, that, that may not be a dollar and cents per se, but um, it's definitely uh, an important factor, especially when you're a, a small shop and you only have a, a few folks to run it. So. Yeah, and Chris, I want to throw out there too, just the 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 type of um, expertise that you might have to bring in too. So if you're setting up, you know, like a VDI solution and so forth, you might actually have to find somebody that has that expertise uh, to be able to uh, set those things up. And so, um, you know, that was one advantage of having Cameo was is not having to is is really. Uh, because, you, you know, you have uh, a background where you wear many hats inside of education, it was really easy to set up and, and share those applications with your end users that just saved you tons and tons of time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, BDI is a very complicated beast. Um, it, even if you're very well versed in it, it, it's still to do it right and not just do it, but to do it right, there's a lot of time investment. And not only that, if, if there's something that, that goes awry with the one thing you're trying to do, to then take the time to troubleshoot that. So, so yeah, again, to, to, to work with uh, Cameo and, and getting all that set up, if you know how to install an application, um, chances are you can set Cameo up without a problem. That's great. So, you know, obviously, you know, we talked a little bit about optimizing, you know, the existing infrastructure, how to do that, you know, while reducing costs at the same time. You know, both of those things, you know, seem, um, you know, it, it, it's it's tough to, to balance doing both of those things while making sure that all of this is in service of improving the actual education experience. So, you know, Chris, tell us a little bit about your, your you know, how you prioritize that and how you were able to to deliver on that while also reducing cost and, and optimizing your, your infrastructure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, obviously dollars and cents are certainly important to a district, but um, quality of education, I think is, is probably, you know, that's our driving force, right? We, we want to make sure that the, the technology and the tools that those students have um, is not only effective, um, but it's relevant, right? So, you know, probably some of the, the big things, um, at least from us, our, our standpoint was, 
we didn't have a lab anymore, which meant all of those scheduling conflicts where, you know, you have people fighting over periods of time that they wanted to use in order to, to, to do a project, that all goes away. Um, and probably the other, the other big thing, especially for um, some of the secondary folks who maybe only have a 40 or an hour minute block a day to work on a project, that goes away, right? So they're not limited to when they have that class that they were working on a project to, to do it. They can do it whenever they want. If they have a study hall or if, if they want to work on it at home, they have that option. So really giving them the, the tools and giving them the tools to use them whenever they want, as long as you know they have some way to, to get online at home or, or, or wherever they might be, you know, that is that is huge. And you know, and sometimes too, with the with the labs, we'd run into a situation where maybe you wouldn't have enough in in one space for for students as well. So maybe you'd have to have kids buddy up or um, or work together. But again, we already had that one to one program in place, um, so every student had a device, so that wasn't an issue. So again, kind of what Jordan was saying was, hey, we already have these devices in hand. Let's let's make use of them. Everyone has one, um, and and now you know again, students and and uh, and teachers can can work on those projects whenever whenever they want to for as long as they want to. That's great. And Chris, there's a few a uh, few attendees who uh, had to join a little bit late. Would it be possible if you still have it up to for me to pass the screen to you and have you show the portal again real quick to, in terms of the actual experience and how easy it is for for students to access these apps? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. I'm gonna go ahead and pass you the screen. There you go. All right, can you see me? Yes, I can. All right, perfect. All right, so um, again, this was our uh, this was our portal um, that we had set up customized uh, to what we wanted. Um, and again, it's just literally as simple as clicking on an app that you want, um, and then it goes ahead and launches that program just as you would have had expected it to um, on a PC. Um, and and really, it functions um, exactly as as we would want. But um, you know, in a little bit, we'll talk about some some of the other um, neat things that we can do with this um, that kind of gives it that Google twist that really makes it relevant uh, to uh, to our Chromebook users. That's great. Excellent. Actually, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, leave the, if you can go back to your, the portal view real quick. Uh, sure. I'll leave that up there real quick so people can see that. Um, but in the meantime, so, so Kyle, um, you know, tell us a little bit more. I mean, obviously, for, you know, Google for Education, you guys are so focused on on partnering with schools and making sure that they're delivering the best possible uh, experience, you know, for the for the students. So tell us a little bit more about kind of where this all plays, how the, how the pieces come together, and and how you work with students to to enable that, or work with schools to enable that. Yeah, well, whenever I think of this one, I, I try to keep it really short and simple. I think just kind of back to what our our overall goal is in education. So with School for Education, our goal is to help expand learning for for everyone. And we think that learning should be possible on any device, any budget, and, and at any time. Um, I love that Camille helps with this because I, I can kind of put myself in that student's shoes. And if I'm told that I have this one hour a day to do this one project at this one specific time frame, I mean, what if that's not when I'm the most productive or what if I want to spend some extra time working on it? I feel like I feel like that kind of changes the learning experience. So when you really unlock that to be able to do it, you know, in the classroom, on the go, or wherever, I think it's just a lot more helpful and let that student learn kind of however they feel like they should be learning. Uh, I know that, you know, personalized learning is a huge thing that gets talked about in schools a lot, and I feel like we should be thinking more and more about how we can enable these students to work on what they want to work on when they want to work on it. Um, I, I did want to lob a question back over to Chris. Um, I know with the schools that I've been talking to about Caneo, I, I think that usually they start to see the value pretty quickly, but they go, oh, you know, now I have to go to like the superintendent or the CIO or, you know, fill in the blank and and talk to them about this. Like, how did that journey look for you, Chris? Like, was it a was it a tough ask? Like, how, how did it look to actually go like actually get this implemented and go through that process? Yeah, I mean, I, I was tasked with uh, with trying to find a solution um, by our CTO. So you know, he he was like, hey, let's try and find something that that works uh, well and kind of fits into to you know what what we've outlined and and, and discussed. Um, and kind of once I, I had had realized the potential and, and and things that I was able to do with Cameo and and show and showed him kind of what 
what it was capable of, um, he kind of took the ball and ran with it from there. So, um, you know, it, it doesn't take much to to show, you know, what this product can do and and how simple it, it is and, and really what the impact will be. Um, so once once you have that that buy in, I mean, it's it's really not not a difficult sell by any stretch. That's great. Kyle, do you have anything else you wanted to add there? No, no, I think I'm all set. I just uh, that's that's always a a piece of information I'm looking to find out for my customers too. Is you know how they go through this process and the way that Chris walked through it makes a lot of sense. And I hope that approach makes sense for other districts as well. Excellent. And Jordan, you know, in all your work with other districts, you you see that this holds true that this. Uh, you know, being able to 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 be helping balance between you know reduction in cost and and you know optimizing infrastructure and still delivering a great experience does that does that help people uh, you know sell this vision with internally? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of times, uh, a lot of the districts that we run into are uh, trying to make that that switch uh, to both the cloud and to Chromebook. And what they're seeing is, is that there's there's really some resistance with uh, some of the teachers and so forth. And so, uh, you know, the nice thing about what you can do with Cameo is, is that you can still give them the Chromebook, but still give them that experience from the applications that they're familiar with. Um, the other thing, too, is, is that we've integrated with uh, with the Google um, G Suite, so uh, they can easily authenticate and use the Google uh, G Drive, the Google Drive, to be able to upload all of their documents to directly from the application. So it just makes it a really easy experience for end users. Uh, it makes it really easy for the IT as well, but it makes it really easy for end users to be able to access those applications. They need nothing but a web browser to be able to do that and uh, and get that that common experience uh, to be able to help them uh, make that digital transformation. That's great. Excellent. So so Chris, um, you know, final final notes on that. Uh, you know, any anything else that you want to share in terms of the the experience and how this has been uh, received by the students? No, I mean it, it's really been been great. I mean we've um, we've done a couple things with with Cameo uh, of real real note for us. Um, the first was. Uh, we had a, a college-level business course that um, was originally taught on a lab um, with uh, Office and shifted itself over to Chromebooks uh, and Cameo, and um, they couldn't have been happier with not only the experience, but, you know, again, the ability to work on, on that material um, outside of the classroom. So that, uh, that, was, that was definitely huge. Um, and we also had uh, a science folks who, you know, were, were dead set on using uh, a particular office product um, because of the fact that they just knew it very well and, and it was easy for what they wanted to do. Um, and they would continually, um, you know, go to any place there was an available PC to do it. And again, once we implemented this, they were able to do it right in the classroom, right? They didn't have to leave the classroom, leave the experiment. They didn't have to go anywhere. They could just pull out their Chromebook and go to work. Um, so yeah, for us, I mean, those were some really big wins early on when we first started our, our Cameo journey. Um, that you know, it's it's been very well received, and and folks are are really starting to take to it for sure. That's excellent. Well, I know we have just uh, about ten minutes left uh, to wrap this at at uh, eleven forty five. So wanted to get to a couple of the questions that um, had been submitted. Uh, so moving into to Q and A, the first question we got was. Uh, does does the value of this this joint Cameo and Google solution apply only to large school districts with thousands of users, or would I be able to see similar benefits at a, a smaller individual school level? Um, I will go ahead and and let uh, who, uh, well, let's see, Chris, how would you uh, how would you tackle that? You know, we're not certainly a, a large school district. We're not small either. I feel like we're kind of in the in the sweet spot as far as size. And, uh, you know, it, it, it definitely paid off. Again, if you're in a position to have a one-to-one -one program or close to launching one, and you're also, you know, looking at potentially replacing a large set of aging uh, machines, it, it really does make sense. So, and that's a, a position I think that a lot of districts um, are in or are going to be in very shortly. Um, and especially reevaluating the fact that you may have a one-to-one -one program or are going to be starting one. And, and now you have all these devices that really are, they're extra for the most part because everybody has a device. So, nice, excellent. 
And, and Ruby, what are your thoughts on this in terms of, uh, you know, what you've seen in dealing with, with both schools and, and larger districts? Yeah, so, you know, Google for Education works with all schools and, you know, not just public schools, but independent schools as well. We work with school districts of all sizes and consortiums and everything in between. And we find that the, the idea of modernizing infrastructure is something that is common amongst all of us, right? So in our work, we've seen um, projects of this scope um, all across different sizes of school districts. I think what's really nice is you're able to have a lot of freedom and flexibility. And that's something that's only really afforded to you by working with a solution like Cameo that's based on the cloud. Um, and that allows you to use as many applications as possible or maybe even just one. Um, I know that we've had cases where school districts are interested in having these applications serving students during the school year and then in the summertime, um, that, that district in particular doesn't use um, that application for summer courses, so they'll actually spin that down. That allows them to save on costs. Um, and, you know, I think that gives you a lot of flexibility to also think about, you know, if there's a, a case where if you have another classroom that's coming into place and you have a new instructor, you can easily scale up. Um, so I think that scalability and the flexibility and also maintaining all of that from one simple pane of glass, so to speak, um, that's been really attractive regardless of where you're coming from. That's excellent. Jordan, any additional thoughts? No, I think you guys said a lot of good stuff. <laughs> uh, Actually, but yeah, we can support both uh, both enterprise and small. And I think the you know that ease of use really fits in with um, with both of those, right? Uh, you know, a large organization obviously they don't want to hire in expertise. They don't want to get additional consulting when they can do it themselves. And uh, for a smaller uh, you know when organization, when you're wearing multiple hats, it just makes it really easy for you to to create those applications uh, for the teachers that are are wanting to uh, be able to share those applications with their students and and help them in their learning process. That's great. So this next question, um, I think, is kind of a follow-up, it, it looks like, um, and targeted to Chris. So, Chris, in, in, I know you mentioned that, you know, you were able to, you know, personally get this moving in, in a day by yourself. Uh, but this question is, how long did it take uh, Homer to deploy this all in, like, from first evaluation to actually it being in use by the students? So, like, what is, I think they're trying to get at, what, what was the, the whole process like? How, how long did that take? Sure. And, you know, I think most of our process was driven by the school year. You know, obviously that, that is very, very uh, predictable and we know what that is. And, um, you know, for, for at least in, in New York and, and where we are, it's a, you know, 10 month uh, with July and August being off. So, you know, we started this process, uh, I think it was late spring-ish, a few years back, and Jordan might be able to help keep me honest on that. But uh, so we started uh, working on the process and, and chatting with Cameo. Um, I think I got the link to our server and I, as I said, went to town and installed everything. And um, that day had it up and, and working for myself to make sure it would, would, would work. And I think the next day I, I passed it over to our CTO and said, hey, take a look at this. This is pretty cool. Um, I think we played around with it for a week or so. Um, we then set up a, a proof of concept uh, with Cameo. And um, I think that was maybe eight or nine weeks-ish. And um, I think that brought us close to the end of the school year. Um, I think we did use a little bit of it during our summer school. Um, but, you know, we were ready to go uh, September to, to deploy at full scale, and we, and we did. Um, we did have lots of PD in between just to not necessarily show people how to use Cameo, but just to show them that it was a thing that we now had, we had an offering that was different. So um, it was more of a, of a, you know, jumping up and down saying, hey, we have this new thing that you guys need to check out. Um, so it really, it could be done in a shorter period of time, depending, again, on what, at what point during your school year you roll this out? Yeah. Um, but e easily, easily within probably, and again, how much buy-in you get, I, I would say within a few months you could go from from nothing to a, a full, um, a full, a full-blown uh, solution. That's excellent. That's great. And so the the next question actually kind of dovetails nicely with what you just mentioned at the end, which is how long it takes to get buy-in. So the next question is. What are your recommendations for building the ROI case that I can present to my manager? So, um, you know, again, let, let's let's start with uh, hearing from you, Chris. And I know uh, Jordan, Kyle, Ruby. You know, you guys probably 
uh, help folks out with this, you know, all the time. But Chris, how, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I definitely had a hand in, in figuring this out myself. Uh, and, you know, the first thing is you have to know your environment and you really have to know what you have out there. Um, and I think the next thing is knowing what what's out there and what is being used on that. So we, we did have the ability to go back and kind of audit and say, hey, we have these labs and these labs are only being used for this purpose. Does it make sense for these labs to only exist to support two applications? Does that make sense? So you start to get into the time evaluation, you start to get into um, you start to get into money, especially as we're talking in in replacing machines, right? So we have to replace all these labs. So I think knowing what your what your current state is, knowing where you want to go, right? We knew that we wanted to be in a situation where we didn't have labs and we didn't have to worry about licensing and infrastructure and all of that. So you kind of already have to have that in the back of your mind already as far as where, where you are and where you want to go. And I think from there, it's not a hard leap to, to, to just start to pare things down and, and once you get to the point of I've got, you know, all these labs and 800 bucks and, and 24K a lab, and then once those dots start to connect, and especially once you get into time and, hey, all, all of our techs don't have to be tied up for a week putting in a lab, yeah. you start to build that case. And once you build that case, I think it's a pretty solid foundation to, to pitch uh, up the chain. That's great. Kyle, Ruby, uh, what are your thoughts on on any tips and tricks you can share in terms of uh, helping to build the case? Yeah, um, one thing I had top of mind is that, you know, your friends over here at Google and Cameo can always help you out with, you know, the numbers portion of this. But I, I think the big part is trying to find out what that what that aha moment for the district is. You know, is it is it focusing on aligning this to your school's mission? Is it really focusing on the dollars and cents? Is it focusing on maybe like a computer lab issue you have? I think it's a matter of looking at your own school and figure out like what's going to make that light turn on for some of your leadership and, and you know, a applying it through that lens. Because otherwise, you know, for the for the numbers, look at just what's the ROI of having a computer lab versus the ROI of uh, Cameo. That's something that, you know, we're more than willing to help out with getting those numbers crunch for you guys. Absolutely. That's a great point. Yeah, to build on that, I think uh, there's a lot of value in having a simple solution, using this as maybe even the first step into moving your on-prem systems into the cloud. We've seen a lot of that as well. Um, the other thing that we've seen um, a, a great amount of traction for on our, on our end is just to make sure that the, we're presenting opportunities for our access to technology. And an opportune time to explore some of this is maybe when you're coming up on a hardware or infrastructure refresh, whether that be on the server side or on the device side, um, it usually makes sense to start thinking about consolidating your environments onto the platform or being able to support, um, you know, the, the full environment. And if you have a lot of Chromebooks, you're going one to one. Um, being able to support the existing environment is something that's really resonated at the value point. So um, we are happy and here to work with you all, and um, we want to make sure that it makes sense. Um, and so far, we found that, and in most cases, um, the dollars and cents and some of like uh, what what our district vision is and goals are actually lends pretty well with this sort of solution, um, and it's easier to manage too. So it really just does come down back to me for for ease of use and simplicity, um, while not uh, hindering the student learning experience. That's excellent. Jordan, any last comment to make? We've just got a couple minutes left. <laughs> yeah, around ROI, um, it's really that total economic impact. It's the you know it's the total cost of ownership. Uh, I think a lot of people tend to fall back on just what the hardware cost is. Uh, but you know, Chris mentioned it too. it's the it's the painful process of reimaging machines. It's the you know setting up the infrastructure to support all of that. Uh, you know, we can quantify um, human resources, you know, so things like uh, how much time does it take for a tech to be able to set up all of those things? Um, it's that um, single um, it's that single management uh, space where you're able to have it in a in just a simple space to, uh, so that you can always uh, manage and, and maintain it all from uh, a central location. You don't have to worry about uh, you know, multiple points of failure. There's just so many things that are involved in that ROI to consider. So you know, keep that in mind when you're just looking at what does a PC lab cost? Well, did you consider all of those aspects of it, including the facility cost and the cost of taking the teacher out of the classroom and all those different types of things? And, and eventually it will start to make a whole lot of sense. Uh, and so, you know, um, 
so I'm sure you're going to talk about this, but when it does start to make a lot of sense, this is a great time for you to start investigating from an educational perspective. Uh, you know, you know, you this is a great time to look at software uh, before the summer comes up uh, so that you can justify your budgets coming up. Uh, usually a lot of times uh, education uh, changes their budgets in July. And so, you know, take a look at it, go download it for free um, and not, and go take the trial of Cameo. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll help you out with a lot of those um, a lot of those steps along the way, as as Chris had pointed out. Excellent. Well, everybody, we're we're at time. Um, we're gonna go ahead and let everybody go. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Ruby. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Chris, for your time. Chris, especially for sharing your your insight with your peers and kind of helping us, um, you know, dive into these these issues today. We really appreciate your time. Uh, for everybody on the line, uh, like I said, we'll be sending the recording of this out to you in case you want to share this with any. Uh, colleagues, we do encourage you to just go ahead and, and go ahead and uh, sign up for the free trial today uh, and get started. We'd be happy to, uh, A, it's very simple to get started, as, as Chris mentioned, or we could you know, be happy to give you a demo and walk you through it and help you get started. Um, and yeah, if there are any other questions that you guys have for us, please you know, reach out to us anytime uh, here at Cameo, as, as well as our partners at Google for Education. And we appreciate